Story 1. Someone in my class had a cold and wiped their snot into a scrap piece of paper as they didn't have any tissue. They then scrunched it up and left it on the side of their desk. Teacher saw this, thought it was a note, and grabbed the paper, going through the usual fanfare of the importance of not passing notes around. The look on her face when she opened it was priceless. Story 2. I don't know if this is the best, but it's pretty profound. I usually ignored note passing. If a student didn't want to pay attention, but wasn't bothering anyone else, I was cool. In the age of cell phones, notes were kind of outdated anyway. So I had this student who could do origami like a boss, and he was always making all kinds of animal figures and cool shapes that I would put on the corkboard behind my desk. This one day, he's getting his fold on and is completely focused and not paying attention. Before I know it, class is over and it's on my desk. He stops on the way out of my class and says, You're gonna want to read that. I read it, and he asked for lunch money because his mom took off and he was hungry. It really hurts being a teacher some days. Story 3 I was in 8th grade and it was a hot sunny day in mid-May. I wrote it snowing on a piece of paper and showed it to my friend sitting next to me, who immediately looked out the window. We both laughed because obviously it wasn't snowing. Then, he and I laughed when I showed it to another student and they immediately looked out the window. And so on until most of the class is in on the joke and watching as I show the piece of paper to the next unwitting fool. Almost every student knows what's going on. When my teacher sees that I'm showing this piece of paper to everyone and making them laugh, she walks over to my desk, looks down at the piece of paper that says it's snowing, and instinctively looks out the window. The entire class bursts out in laughter. Story 4. Not really a note, but when I was teaching college classes, I caught two of the girls whispering, so I told them, if you're going to tell secrets, you need to share with the rest of the class. I taught preschool before this. She looked right at me and said without the slightest embarrassment, I was just telling her that I think you have a cute butt. I was teaching a communications class, and we were discussing communications in the workplace, and I looked down at the textbook. After seeing what the next section was, I said, Okay, moving on to the next section, titled Sexual Harassment. Everyone roared with laughter. A couple weeks later at a baseball game paid for by the school, she came on to me really hard with my fiancé right there. I had something similar happen. I had taken a substitute job at a middle school and saw two girls passing a note back and forth. They were doing their work at first, so I ignored it. Eventually, I thought I'd do a drive-by and confiscate it. I looked down and they were talking about how they thought I was cute. I said nothing ain't gonna touch that one and it would have added unnecessary embarrassment. Your story is funny, though. Story 5. I am not a teacher, but I have a story which was kind of the opposite. When I was in college, I was in a large math lecture hall two times a week, and my friends and I took to making paper planes and throwing them down from the back of the theater. We did it often, and I'm sure we thought we were hilarious. Somehow, nobody said a word, except for the occasional snicker. And it went on like that, on and off for the semester. Then, on the last day, I remember writing Happy Christmas, Dr. Jones, on a plane and throwing it down. Seeing it land in front of the lecturer, he blew a fuse and started shouting about how this had been going on all semester and he thought it was a disgrace. Then he picked up the plane and read the message, got very embarrassed and meekly said, Thank you. I still cringe to think of my childish actions but it did give me that moment of connection with the lecturer before failing his class. Story 6. Another non-teacher here, but my 7th grade teacher typically always wore a dress shirt to class and looked very presentable, but this day he had his sleeves rolled up. Now, everyone loved this teacher, but my immediate thought was to write a note to my friend sitting beside me that his arms were super hairy, and that note was passed back and forth with us cracking jokes about it. Nothing malicious or overly mean, just that we didn't think he'd have such hairy arms. We eventually got caught, and between classes he took us aside and warned us not to pass notes. And since this was the first time this happened, he would toss it out without reading it and let us go. Well, a couple months go by and he decides to wear short sleeves again, and his arms are noticeably less hairy. 
I know 12 year olds don't have the greatest moral compass, but to this day I still feel so bad that my dumb little note might have made him so self-conscious about something so unimportant. I'm sorry Mr. F, wherever you are now. We made a teacher cry one time, changed the whole dynamic of the class. We were very nice after that day, to the point where we still hit him up when we were back in town. He's even been to quite a few of our weddings. It hit us all so hard to see a grown man tear up. I think we went to him after school to apologize. Best part of growing older is being able to hang with the teachers who we gave hell to in grade school. Story 7. I taught for a decade in a really rough area. I intercepted a lot of notes and was pretty shameless in public humiliation of my kids. I read a lot of bad stuff out loud. However, one really nice moment that stands out was when the super popular bubbly Latina girl sat next to the stereotypical depressed weird white theater band girl. I see them passing notes, which are really uncharacteristic. The band girl seemed off and upset, but I let it go because it seemed like there was something more going on, and the Latina girl was a really nice kid. I didn't think she was bullying or anything. I had the girl stay after for a second and ask them what was up. The Latina girl said, I was worried about her. She looked sadder than usual, so I wanted to make sure she's cool. I asked the other girl if that's what was happening, and she said yep, and showed me the notes, which was a really heartfelt convo about boys, relationships, and feeling lonely. It was so damn sweet. I asked if they needed more time, and they both said yes. I could get them excused from their next class, and they asked if they could chill and talk more. I said sure. Because you bet your ass wellness and mental health is an F-ton more important than curriculum. They really had a moment, and it seemed to help them both. This was as 10th graders. I got to see them really develop a nice friendship over the next few years. Go girls! Wherever you are now, I hope you're still friends, and I'm glad I could help facilitate that. Story 8 In health class, we were talking about boners and how they fill up with blood. My cousin took a piece of paper and wrote, Your is filled with blood, and threw it at some popular kid. The teacher picked it up, and you could see him die inside, because of the immaturity of 8th graders and how he has to teach them for a career. Story 9 In 3rd grade, 1996, my class was performing a play. I had a total of two lines of dialogue, but I really wanted to get it right. So I copied my lines from the textbook, folded it up, and stuck it in my pocket. The teacher only saw the last bit of this, but assumed I was sticking a note in my pocket and told me to get up in front of the class and read it out loud. I recited my lines verbatim and handed the note to the teacher. Without reading it, she assumed I was being a smartass and sent me to the principal's office, where I received recess detention and a call to my parents. Not sure why I never asked anyone to read the note, but I didn't. The next day when I arrived at school, my teacher pulled me aside and told me that she had read the note, realized what it was, and apologized profusely. She took me down to the office to call my parents and let me go out for two periods of recess. Props, Mrs. W., for the life lesson about humility and doing the right thing. I still remember. Story 10. Not a note, but an anonymous question to the class. In health class in freshman year of high school, we had to anonymously write questions about sexuality and the reproductive process. And the teacher would pull out a random card, read the question, and respond with a textbook answer. Said teacher was very religious and very open about her faith in a way that seemed almost patronizing. So I was surprised when she pulled out and read a card that said, What does the word mean? She looked at the card, looked at us all calmly, and then proceeded to pull up Wikipedia and other web media to inform us of the origin of the word, its connotation, and how it's used differently around the world. I was kind of shocked that she just wanted us to know what it meant, as if to say, don't look like a dumb F if you want to use this word in a sentence. Story 11 one day in middle school, right around when the Nintendo Wii came out, you could add other friends online for certain compatible online Wii games by sharing a serial code of like 16 numbers or something around there. Sitting in the back of our 7th period science class, three of my friends and I started to exchange and write down our Wii serial codes on a small piece of paper. We'd pass it down and share it as we passed it and copy them in our notebooks. Our teacher pauses his lecture as he looks at us. He just gets up from the front of the class, walked to our row where the four of us sat, 
put his hand out to my buddy for the paper with all of our serial codes on it, takes a moment to glance at it only to see a matrix of random numbers followed by the first letter of our names. He then glances up at us and then to my buddy with the most dumbfounded stare, squints, and asks, Is this some kind of joke? Because I'm clueless on this one. My buddy that had to explain himself saved us all the embarrassment and said I'll explain after class as he blushed. Luckily, our teacher was a really cool dude and was fine with that answer and told us to just put it away. We told him after class, and he understood, but also said he was expecting some sort of elaborate code that we were encrypting messages in. Story 12 When I was in high school, I started a note from the back row of the class, which was passed and read by nearly everyone in the class. The teacher grabbed it as it went past him, when there were only three people left who hadn't read it. I think he was going to read it out loud to the class, but he looked at it before he read it. All the notes said was that the zip on his pants was down. With all respect to him, he calmly zipped up and continued teaching. Story 13 In high school, a girl in class passed a note to another girl, asking if she had a pad or tampon. Teacher completely blew up, started yelling at them, and asked them to read it out loud. They did, and the teacher, who was an older man, immediately calmed down and let it go. I think he was more embarrassed than the girls. Story 14. In my college thermodynamics class, the professor said that he didn't care if we got a text message in class. However, he did care if we had our ringers on. So his rule was that if you got a text message and your phone went off loud enough for the whole room to hear it, you had two options. You could either read the text out loud to the whole class, or you could bring in donuts for everyone at the next class. There were about 20 of us. Of course, everyone keeps their phones on silent, so it never happens. Until smack dab in the middle of one of the exams, when the professor's phone gets a text message and rings out loud and clear in the middle of the exam. Professor freezes, takes one look at his phone as we all start giggling, and says, Guess I'm bringing all of you donuts on Wednesday. They were delicious. Story 15. When I was in high school, we had a kid pass a note to another kid all subtle-like. They both sat behind me in the same row. The kid didn't even read it. He put it in his pocket, but the teacher saw. She made him stand up and told him to pull out the note. He refused. She told him to pull out the note again, and he refused. She legit reached into his pocket and said something like, Let's see what you're hiding from class. She saw the contents and went white. She grabbed both boys and led them to the office immediately. The note, which I later found out, said something along the lines of, package left in second trash can of the third empty room, or something like that, with a gun. You won't need it. Don't F this up. The police found a small amount of heroin and a 22 pistol with no ammo in the said trash can underneath some balled up papers. This turned into a mess where the kids both claimed neither one wrote the note and were not the intended recipient. So the school said they would expel everyone from that line of desks, which our parents pretty much stopped. The police tried searching all of our homes, but my parents refused to allow anyone into our home. I was in band at the time and had to take a drug test every six weeks. My parents believed me, so they refused to allow the police to search the home. The event never got punished because they could never prove anything other than the teacher saw two kids pass a note. About four years after graduation, I saw on MySpace, yep, that long ago, that one of them died to an OD and the other was arrested for his murder. They never got him for murder of supplying drugs to a druggie, but they did get him on a drug charge. Story 16 Back in my substitute teaching days, just out of college, I was subbing for a junior high science teacher. I thought the day had been going relatively smoothly, but during a break, I noticed a note on the floor. I picked it up and read it, and it said, Mr. Palkito is an a-hole. Keep quiet. Keep your head down. Stay calm. To this day, I appreciate the implication that, to that set of kids, I was like the junior high version of the warden from Shawshank Redemption. Story 17. In maybe the fourth or fifth grade, a kid is trying to pass me a note and is caught by the teacher. I wasn't paying attention to where it came from. I only noticed when it was about to be handed to me. She makes him read the note in front of the class. He reads the note, and it says, You want to be my boyfriend? I like the way your booty moves when you walk. I overreact and say, I'm not gay. And the boy says, I didn't write that. It came from Tasha. 
Everyone laughs, and she and I are both extremely embarrassed. After class, I go talk to her at the locker, and she says, Yeah, I wrote it, but I don't like you like that anymore. Legend has it, I'm still single to this day. Story 18 A few years ago before college, I used to be in a class where people would pass blank notes and try to get caught by the teacher. They knew the teacher could do nothing about it, and we were still pretty immature, so we thought it was funny when she found the notes. As time moved on, people began passing notes with drawings. I remember one person passed a note to me that had a drawing of Thomas the Tank Engine with wings and a halo. Needless to say, she hated our class. Story 19 An 11th grade physics class I teach math, but I was assigned to be present in the class for supervision. In that school, new teachers get to have a more experienced one in the classroom. I was standing at the back of the class when I saw two kids passing around notes and said, you want to read that out loud or maybe give it to me? I could use something to read to help out the guy with not having to deal with it and continue the lesson. That didn't happen though. The boys start laughing, which makes the class and me start laughing as well. Damn the infectious laughter. Instead of giving the paper straight to me, I didn't expect them to read it. The boy opens the note and takes a deep breath. He reads out loud. He reads out loud. Imagine everybody tied to the spring is a slice of ham. Everyone lost it. It was such a random thing to say. I believe the physics teacher still has that note. Story 20. In 7th grade science class, my friend and I passed notes to each other through the guy sitting between us. Our teacher caught one of the boys with a note but knew it wasn't him because it had a lot of doodles of hearts and flowers on it. She opened it up to read to the class to catch whoever did write it. However, the note was written completely in Token's elvish alphabet and she couldn't read a word. Most of the class knew that it had to be me and my friend because we were the only Lord of the Rings nerds in the class obsessed enough to teach ourselves the elvish alphabet. But thankfully, no one ratted us out. We were hoping that writing notes in elvish would keep the boys from reading about my friend's massive crush on one of them. But it ended up also saving us from getting in trouble. Story 21 In 8th grade, a buddy and I were passing notes talking about the events happening that weekend. Local Smash and Halo tournament. The teacher caught me passing back, but just took the paper and didn't force me to read it. Lo and behold, the next morning I get called down to the office. The teacher, who was a fairly old civics teacher, vice principal, school nurse, and my woodshop teacher, who was 27 at the oldest, were all in the office around me. The VP starts off asking me if I'm okay and if I need help. Everyone looks super worried except the woodshop teacher who was clearly holding in laughter. Unbeknownst to me, my edgy dumbass used a sheet of paper that has song lyrics to a Slipknot song on the other side. I used to write song lyrics for my favorite songs while I was bored in class. Ends up, most Slipknot songs when taken out of context by people who are too old to know the band sound really troubling. Especially that relatively new song at the time, Wait and Bleed. I tried explaining it to them that I'm fine and it's legit just a song by a band. I proceeded to show them all the song lyrics by various bands in my notebooks. No, they still didn't believe me. Then my woodshop teacher finally burst out laughing. It ends up he has been trying to explain the exact same things as I said to them for the past half hour. Eventually, we both convinced them that all was fine. But damn. One perk out of all of this, found out that day my favorite teacher was a fan of metal. This is a long one. But here goes. When I was about 14 or 15, my school had an awesome young science teacher, fresh out of university, eager to do well in his first job, passionate about his subject, and always staying late to help out the kids who needed the extra help. Unfortunately, he was super timid and shy, and not very good at handling behavioral issues. Naturally, the your kids, and even the ones you would expect better from, found it fun to completely take advantage of this, and it soon became a common game to just see who could do their best at making his life hell. I never saw him cry myself, but I did see him get pushed to his limits, and one day, I heard he had a bit of a breakdown. I can't remember exactly what I was told happened, but he fled a classroom on the verge of tears and some of the other teachers needed to step in to get the class back under control. 
Anyway, one Monday, we found out he had passed away the day before from an undetected heart problem. His father went to his house the previous Sunday morning when he didn't turn up for their golf lesson and found him dead in his bed. He was 24. Needless to say, all of the kids who tormented him felt absolutely awful about it. One girl in particular confided in me about how she felt so terrible. She knew he was a great teacher, but she joined in with the pack, and now she had to live with knowing this young, kind teacher died, and all she ever did was contribute to make his life difficult. A lesson for young Redditors. Treat your teachers well. They've dedicated themselves to giving you your education, something many people in this world aren't lucky enough to have. They're people like you and me, people just trying to do their jobs well. My mother is an English teacher, and the stress kids put her through resulted in her mental and physical health declining, to the point of needing to leave the job. Again, teachers are people, mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters. Treat them like shit, and you will grow up to regret it and you'll deserve every ounce of the guilt you feel. Story 2. In middle school science, I had a teacher who was always so sweet. She was an older woman, and she always made sure we had materials for her class, often at her own expense. I remember she went out and bought like 20 plastic pencil cases and filled them with pencils, rulers, erasers, everything we would need for the class. One day, some of the kids decided to throw a few of the pencil cases across the room. They snapped some of the rulers and just generally broke a lot of things she provided for us while she stepped out for five minutes to talk to another teacher. When she came back, she started crying, and I remember feeling so bad for her. She gave the class little pieces of candy after, apologizing for losing control and getting emotional. We were the ones who should have been apologetic. She was so sweet to us, even though the class was full of demon children. Story 3. In 5th grade, we had a psychotic substitute teacher, probably in his late 50s. At the beginning of class, everyone was goofing off, and he immediately shut us down by screaming shut up at us, shaking furiously. We all stayed silent after that because he legit freaked us out. But we came to the conclusion that he was hearing voices in his head because about 20 minutes into class, he abruptly stopped talking and screamed at us again at the top of his lungs that we would regret being so loud, but no one had uttered a f***ing word. He then stomped over to the desk, violently swept everything off, muttering the entire time to himself, then went to the back of the room and turned all of the lights off. We were all terrified at this point. He silently paced around the back of the room for a while, then went back to the front and slapped the chalkboard. His next words were what I remember the most clearly. He was violently shaking as he yelled, I'm going to tell your teacher how horrible of a class you all are when she gets back, and I will make sure she burns you up. To hell with all of you. He threw himself back into the teacher's chair and started sobbing. One of my classmates managed to sneak out and get the principal. He was escorted from the classroom a few minutes later, and we all had to individually go into the principal's office and recount what happened. Apparently, he had just gotten a divorce, and he had lost it. He was fired that same day. Honestly, I don't think we actually did anything to warrant his initial reaction. He just snapped. Story 4. I'm a college teacher in the UK. Absolutely love my job love helping the kids I teach, and love helping them reach their uni courses. Never really had many issues with most of my classes, but I had this one class that was really lazy, never did their work. They got a real shit result back one lesson. Average mark was like 30%. I said something in passing, and a student made a comment about how I shouldn't guilt trip them. I explained how I felt like I was working harder than they were, and I felt like I cared more about their result than they did, despite the fact that they would be going to uni. At the time, I was going through a breakup and was living in my car for a few days, and I cried then in front of that class. Awful moment, professionally speaking. Story 5. I had a French teacher once. We were her first class since becoming a teacher. Lovely woman, but many of us suspected she had mental health problems. She was always very quiet and mousy, and she always came in looking a bit messy. 
i.e. hair not brushed and makeup a bit smudged. There were these two girls who would just torment her. They had pickled muscles around the classroom and were just these loud obnoxious assholes. Long story short, it turns out the teacher's mom had just died, and on top of the stress of managing a class with some real horrible kids, she had a nervous breakdown and never came back. About two years later, I was going to a concert and saw her begging for money outside a train station. Just felt so horrible seeing what she had been reduced to, all because of some nasty kids that just pushed her and pushed her. Story 6. Yes, in year 5, 9 to 10, we all had this small, pretty cool teacher take over our class because our usual teacher was out doing something. One day, we would not shut up. Something happened that got us kids all excited, and I was just doodling. I looked up to see the teacher just run out of the class in floods of tears. I then realized just how little attention the class was giving her, and how much they cared, because it took several minutes for everyone to notice she was gone, then went right back to talking. I felt really bad for that teacher, because she was the only teacher in our year who got no respect from the students. Story Story 7. It was the end of the day, and a whole bunch of us 9-year-olds were getting ready to go home, when this kid who was always trying to make trouble started arguing with the teacher about the next day's homework, and she made some comment about his mom, and then he made a rude joke about the teacher's mom, and she burst into tears and screamed her mom was dead. Then we sat in silence for like 5 minutes while the teacher cried. Also, that same teacher once came in crying in the morning, and when we asked asked what happened, she said one of her past students died of leukemia. The worst thing was that we saw that girl like a week before, while the class was taking a walk in the woods, and she and her mom mentioned how she was recovering and was feeling so much better. Story 8. I remember in high school getting a teacher fresh out of uni. He was the best, super passionate about teaching, and would often incorporate music and comedy into his teaching to make it more interesting. Almost everyone in the class loved him because of it. There were three football players who would always play up in class though, and the teacher spent extra attention on them, trying to get them just as excited about learning as the rest of the class. But they were simply too cool to pay attention in class. One day, they took it too far. I can't remember the exact details, but I do remember that one of the football players threw a chair as a joke either at another student or at the teacher himself, and it just broke the poor guy. He lost his at the unruly students, and you could see the pure frustration in his face. He just wanted to teach, but these few students were hell-bent on ruining it for everyone. He ended up just leaving the classroom in tears, and everyone in the class quickly turned against the kids who threw the chair. Story 9. Multiple times. We were a terrible class. She was our 6th grade teacher. Our school had this odd system where you had a homeroom teacher for most of the day, but then rotated around to other teachers for just a few classes. Our homeroom teacher was also the music teacher, and for some reason during music class, all hell would break loose. She went on vacation for a week and came back with a bad sunburn around the eyes, so we would only call her Mrs. Raccoon. It caused her to get more tanning done. During one music class, she really had to go to the washroom, so she left for about four seconds and a fight broke out between a boy and a girl. The girl took the boy's head and threw it through a snare drum. He got stuck in there. She came back to thinking he was dead. Eventually, she had a mental breakdown mid-class and ran out into the hallway crying. The seventh grade teacher saw this and instead of consoling her, walked in and just let us have it. I will never forget that day. He said we were spoiled hats for treating a teacher who only ever wanted to help us like trash. He screamed that if he had a teacher like her when he was a kid, he would do everything he could to keep her. Yelled that if we kept acting this way, we were in for a life of disappointment, brought on by our own rampant incompetence. It worked. Some of us cried, but everyone felt horrible, and we were all nice to her for the remaining year. Story 10. It wasn't my class, but my twin brother's class when we were in grade 7. We went to a public school, which was full of delinquents. 
but his class was especially bad. They had a substitute teacher take over one of their classes for about a month, and one of the kids thought it would be hilarious if he pretended to be severely intellectually disabled. Looking back on it now, it was horrible, but at the time, everyone thought it was hilarious. He would moan words, throw books, water, spit on the floor, and dribble. The class played along with it, but they would all howl with laughter at him. The substitute kept saying things like, he can't control it, stop bullying him. It got to a point where he was being especially bad with his disability and everyone in class kept laughing. She ended up crying in the middle of class and later quit after she found out he had been pretending the entire time. Story 11. The whole class knew our teacher loved us so much. On her birthday, we decided to surprise her once she entered the classroom after the flag ceremony. We were divided into two groups. Some of us are together with the teacher during the flag ceremony, and some are waiting for the flag ceremony to end and are trying to hide in certain places in the classroom. The teacher had no clue of what was actually happening, and when she arrived together with some of our classmates, we started singing happy birthday to her. She was so shocked, you could clearly see her trying to hold back her tears. It was the class's most successful birthday surprise. If you're wondering what a flag ceremony is, in our country, it's held every Monday at 6.30 in the morning. The whole school gathers in a field or gymnasium to honor our country and sing our national anthem while facing the flag, which will be raised by three Boy Scouts, and after that is reciting the national pledges. It follows a long process, starts with praying, and ends after announcements, if there are any, and lasts for at least 30 seconds. Story 12. In fifth grade, my class was always extremely nasty to every substitute teacher that came in. They'd act out, doing and saying stupid shit, and though we never actually saw any of them cry, our regular teacher told us on multiple occasions that we'd left the substitute in tears after class was done. I hated every time there was a substitute, because it would always become a show. Also, in middle school, we had a teacher that started out extremely chill. She said she didn't believe in yelling at students. Unfortunately, though, a lot of the same little from my 5th grade class were in this class too, plus new ones. I don't remember what the cause was exactly, but one day, she just snapped and screamed at us for a good 10 minutes. She definitely believed in yelling at students after that. It's one of the few things from middle school I remember clear as day. Story 13 no, but once in chemistry class, the teacher, Coach Bert, stopped writing on the board, looked straight ahead, and mumbled, I could probably blow my brains all over this chalkboard and y'all wouldn't even notice. The only people that heard him were me and the girl I was talking to. I responded, Coach, I think that's a dry erase board. Nobody uses chalk anymore. And he laughed, which made me feel slightly less concerned. Story 14. When I was in high school, we were misbehaving as a whole group, making noise, not listening, messing around, and finding just about everything that was happening far too funny. Nothing too major. A few of us got sent out to stand in the corridor until she got a handle on things. When she came out to speak to us, one dude was leaning up against the doorframe with his hand, and upon realizing we couldn't contain our laughter, she decided to leave us out there and stormed back into the class, slamming the door. It was at this point the dude screamed with the force of a thousand suns. I hadn't heard anything quite like it. Teacher comes back out instantly, steam bellowing out of her ears ready to completely destroy our childhoods. She turned to the kid and noticed the end of his finger hanging off, instantly realizing she'd shut it in the door. Her mood changed very quickly, and she just broke down into tears. I would have felt bad, but it just topped off the list of things I shouldn't have been laughing at already. Story 15. In 7th grade English, we were still breaking down parts of speech. Our teacher, let's call her Mrs. T, was trying extra hard to be happy and get our attention, and asked one of the worst behaved kids for an example of a sentence so we could break it down as a class. He waited till the room was silent, looked her dead in the eyes, and said, Mrs. T is a bad teacher. She put it up on the board and broke it down through tears. Still makes me mad over 15 years later. Story 16. Not the class, but actually just me specifically. I had just graduated high school a few months ago, 
and I was going to visit the school to see my favorite teacher during the following fall. Pretty customary for graduates to do. They start college in the fall, then when they come back home for Thanksgiving break, they go to the high school and walk around to reconnect with their teachers. The thing was, I wasn't home on break from college. I was home because I had gotten diagnosed with cancer when I was about to start college. So when I went to visit, I was bald and had lost a good amount of weight, though I was feeling pretty good at that point. When I stepped in the doorway of his classroom, he was teaching a class, but it was the end of the period, so he was just wrapping things up. When he saw me there, he took a second to register that it was me. He immediately quieted and started tearing up. He stopped talking to the class and excused himself, then walked away and took a minute to gather himself. I had no idea I would impact someone like that. My heart dropped. He could hardly look at me. Not in a disgusted way or anything like that, just in pure shock and grief. Eventually, I talked to him and explained how everything was going well, and I was going to be okay. But his eyes never stopped tearing and looked glazed over. A couple of days later, he emailed me saying he was so happy to have seen me, and that he was sorry he was so shaken, and he wanted to hear updates from me. Really crazy time. Story 17. When I was in middle school, we had an older teacher with a larger body and very thin legs. As such, she somewhat resembled a hen. It didn't help that she had a bit of a sagging underchin, shorter hair that looked like the top of a chicken's head, and a very pronounced nose. We had a new kid in class who appeared to have been held back a few times and had now landed in that class. The guy was an asshole in general, but the day he called her a chicken and then proceeded to mimic a clucking chicken, complete with arm wings made me realize that she was probably aware of the likeness and may have dealt with people joking about it before. She immediately started crying and fled the room. Instruction was taken over by one of the vice principals for the rest of class, who used that time to admonish us on the dangers of being jerks. Later in college, I was taking an anthropology elective in an auditorium-sized lecture hall. The professor had a very thick Indian accent. I apologize, I don't know enough about the region to specify which dialect, but was still very much understandable. During a lecture on dialects and the concept of texts, she commented about how these can lead to miscommunications between different regional groups, and one student yelled from the back of the lecture hall, Oh, so it's hard when you can't understand what the f someone is saying? The professor got quiet for a moment before muttering, I have no words. Class is dismissed. She gathered her stuff and left the lecture hall. I felt so bad for her. The next lecture, some higher up in her department came along and addressed the class about how that level of disrespect was absurd at an institution of higher learning. I'm not even sure if the guy who said it was there. I had a few takeaways from these incidents. First, as as middle school kids can be, nobody joined in on the joke with asshole number one. And Toll 2 caught a lot of what the f is wrong with you looks in the lecture hall. Second, in the case of the college professor, her level of professionalism was astounding. The next class, after the higher up was done talking to us, she continued as if nothing had happened. Even when it happened, she gathered herself enough to properly dismiss the class. It was inspirational in a surreal kind of way.